welcome back to Space Time Visualizer. Now, before the nitpicking begins, yes, I do know that there's no way that an episode of Quantum Leap could have been broadcast on August the 8th, 1953. It is, however, the date that Sam Beckett leaps into in the final installment of this time travel series. Not following me? Well, don't worry. This is one of those rare occasions where the series premise can be explained to you without me having to drone on and on and on and on. Q opening titles. Theorizing that one could time travel within his own lifetime, Dr. Sam Beckett stepped into the Quantum Leap Accelerator and vanished. He woke to find himself trapped in the past, facing mirror images that were not his own, and driven by an unknown force to change history for the better. His only guide on this journey is Al an observer from his own time, who appears in the form of a hologram that only Sam can see and hear. And so Dr. Beckett finds himself leaping from life to life, striving to put right what once went wrong, and hoping each time that his next leap will be the leap home. Although the series has its fans, I think it would be fair to call Quantum Leap an undeservedly forgotten show sidelined by lesser and more obvious artefacts of the 1980s, like Dallas and the A-Team. It certainly holds up well when compared with these or any examples of so-called high-concept science fiction of the period. Yes, I'm looking at you, Manimal. If ever a series hinged upon the chemistry of its stars, Quantum Leap was it. The nature of the show's format meant that Scott Bakula as Sam Beckett and Dean Stockwell as Al Calavici had to be able to carry the show. Fortunately for viewers, both the actors and scriptwriters conspired to create one of the most enjoyable double acts to grace the small screen. Perhaps what keeps them so compelling over the course of five seasons is the way in which Sam's memory is wiped or Swiss cheesed by the leaping process. The duo have to get to know each other all over again, and as a result we're constantly finding out new facets of the characters. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that Bakula is one of the greatest leading men in TV history defined not only by his likeable characterization as Sam, but by the way he consistently met challenges posed by the series format. The man can do anything. In assuming the personas of the people he leaps into, Sam, and in turn Scott, is required to step outside of his comfort zone. Over the course of the series he steps up to the plate and becomes a rock star, a football player, a priest, a beauty queen and a pilot, to name but a few. Oh, and he can belt out a decent song too. Hear me now, O oh thou bleak and unbearable world, thou art base and debauched as can be. And the knight with his banners all bravely unfurled now hurls down his gauntlet to thee. As with Doctor Who, Quantum Leap's time travel format allowed for infinite variation on what could have been a very limiting story type. Part detective series and part science fiction, each installment saw Sam having to adjust to a new locale, time and body before figuring out exactly what it was he had to fix before moving on. Even this format, however, had the potential to grow stale, so in order to combat any malaise, the series' core elements were often shaken up, with aspects like the evil leapers, multi-episode arcs and celebrity leaps being introduced to the mix. In fact, one of the series' most effective episodes is completely atypical, with Sam finding himself leaping home and into the body of Al, only to find himself having to tragically leave again. Quantum Leap ran for five seasons before falling viewing figures saw the show cancelled. Fortunately, the series producer saw the writing on the wall and wisely came up with a season finale that, while providing a sense of closure, could have taken the series in a whole new direction had the show been picked up. In Mirror Image, Sam is deeply concerned to find he has leaped into what seems to be his own body on the exact date and time of his birth. What's more, he begins to recognise names and faces he has previously encountered on his travels. The one person who seems to understand what's going on is a local bar owner named, eerily enough, Al. I'd hate to spoil the finale for anybody who hasn't seen it, so all I can really add is that this episode is quite controversial amongst fans and casual viewers. For my money, it works, but I can see why it leaves some people cold. At once heartbreaking and uplifting, the installment's theological approach to the series' central premise impacts upon every episode to precede it. Well, I think my job here is done, because that, in a nutshell, was what made Quantum Leap great. Until next time...
Mr. Murdoch, I've got Miss Brooks on the line. She'd like to know if she should proceed with Operation Spying Bastards. Oh boy. Mm -hmm.